بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on in our study or reading of an نصيحة by Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili حفظ الله تعالى we reach the second point and before we get into the second point I wanted to mention something uh, very important and it was some advice from Imam Fozan حفظ الله تعالى about uh, the issue of engaging in refutations for the for the general Muslim and the issue of uh, you know who whose responsibility is this and also that we should be looking for the to benefit people through refutations not to destroy people and expose their mistakes and especially as Sheikh Ibrahim wrote this treatise this was nasiha for Ahlul Sunnah so this was advice for how Ahl Sunnah should deal with issues between themselves. Not necessarily the same principles are going to be applied exactly with Ahl Bid'ah. There's a difference. There's a difference with someone who, between someone whose usul, their foundation, is that they don't call to Tawheed hardly. They, or they have a totally different understanding of Tawheed, you know, and, and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe they say Allah is everywhere. Maybe they say Allah is in the creation. Maybe they say Allah is within you and I. You know, that's a very different way of dealing with someone like this who has uh, either bid'ah that could take them out of the fold of Islam or bid'ah, which is, uh, you know, a great distortion of the creed of Ahl Sunnah compared to someone who their usul is Ahl Sunnah, but maybe they made a mistake. Or maybe they fell into a sin, or and, and it's outward, and maybe they, or maybe it's just a disagreement. Whatever the case may be, this treatise was written to help uh, and to give us insight into the various reasons uh, and, and ways that we can, uh, with the intent of rectifying, rectifying what has taken place between Ahl Sunnah and the quickness with which the youth cut one another off. So Sheikh Salah bin Fazan, he said, he said, we advise you with having taqwa law and continuing in seeking knowledge and being eager in doing so and acting upon what Allah taught you and calling to Allah and teaching the people what you have learned. So this is for the student of knowledge and abandoning the bickering that is taking place amongst the students. The bickering, insulting, and sowing of seeds of discord such that they split apart the ummah and split apart the students. Beware of so-and-so. Do not sit with so-and-so. Do not read to so-and-so. This is not allowed. If so-and-so has made a mistake, you advise him privately. So this is very important. Why is it, and I, this is what I want you to question your question and think about, why aren't you being taught this? This is Imam Fozan. And a lot of people, they quote from different scholars who are not on his level. Okay, and they and then they take such a harsh black and white position. Oh, we saw Tahir doing this. Mufti sat with this one. He visited this masjid. So and so did this. So and so did this. Why do they take such a stern position on these issues? People have the same akidu, studied in the same places they did, the same methodology, the same madhab, and do not make inkar of those masai. They don't make, uh, they don't deny those principles, but yet. There is only, it's a black and white vision, and it's a, a, a way of just bickering and attacking, and then they involve the youth in this, and they involve the lay persons. I just heard a clip of one of these du'at, may Allah guide us in him, because this is a guy who, who studied for many years here in Saudi, but he was spending, uh, you know, a significant amount of time attacking Tahir Wyatt, okay, and... Uh, this isn't about defending Tahir, but it's about defending the Haq and defending Tahir because he is from Ahl Sunnah and, we, and he should be defended. Like, likewise, the Muslim does cover one another's faults and they defend one another and they assist one another and they ta'awan ala biri wa taqwa. They cooperate in righteousness and goodness. But why is it that someone who takes from the same scholars, <laughs> basically, and everything else in the same minhaj, but yet you would devote countless lectures on trying to belittle the good that this man is doing for the community. So this shows that something is wrong and there's a sickness in the heart. And this is not what those major scholars 
uh, advise. And we're going to come with a lot of statements. So sit in your seats and relax and hold on and put your seatbelts on because we're going to put give you some statements of the major scholars of this time, like Imam Al-Albani, Bin Baz, Bin Uthaymin, him, and, and show you that this is not the minhads that they were propagating. This is not this attacking and tearing apart. They were talking about maslaha between Ahl Sunnah and when people had the same minhaj. And they were talking about overlooking mistakes or advising one another with regards to mistakes instead of just publicly a new tape, a new audio, a new this, a new that, and gathering the people around you in regards to the mistakes of someone else. Imam Fozan also said, as for spreading this mistake of his amongst the people and to warn against him while he is an alam, he's talking about an ulama, or a student, or a righteous man, <clears throat> Though he has made a mistake, then this spreading of the mistake is not required. The statement of Allah, verily those who like that, the crime of illegal sexual intercourse should be propagated amongst those who believe they will have a painful torment in this world and in the hereafter. And Allah knows and you know not. So Sheikh Salih bin Fazen, he used that statement to show that you should not want any uh, sinfulness of the believers to be spread around the community. And we know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, The Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves, graves of Jews, and he said, Verily they're being punished, and they're not being punished for something that the people think is great. And he says, And as for the first one, then he used to not clean himself properly, you know, maybe make it stinja or urine and, and uh, filth would get on his clothing. And he says, and as for the second one, he used to carry tails, uh, spread tails, you know, namima, spread tails with the intent of spreading wickedness throughout the community. So that shows us that those are punishable offenses in the hereafter, meaning a person will be punished in the grave for this. So do you really want to involve yourself in this as a lay person or even a student of knowledge? Do you want to get in that? Do you want to have that chance? Or do, are you so sure that what you're doing when you're eating the flesh of this da'i and tearing this da'i and this one just said this on Instagram, this one did this, and you're just constantly involved in that? Is it better to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not involve yourself? Or is it better to emerge because you think that it's going to benefit you with Allah? Because remember, all of this is ibadah. It's about coming closer to Allah. It's not about being closer to the in crowd or the clique or the publication or the mekteba or this or that group or that group. No, it's about being closer and getting right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spreading khair and being a part of khair. May Allah bless us to be a part of it, I mean, of the good. Then Imam Fuzan said, and Allah knows, and you know not, he says, what is obligatory is for the Muslims to advise each other. What is obligatory is mutual love between the Muslims and especially the students and especially with the ulama. Then he mentions about the layperson. He said, respecting the ulama, not recommending some of them and warning against some of them, this is a reason for much evil and a reason for bickering and hating and a reason for fitna. Avoid these matters, Jazakumullah khairan, and be as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants uh, in the saying of Allah where he said, and verily, this is your religion, is one religion. Uh, and the statement of Allah, and do not be like those who split apart and differed after the clear signs came to them, and it is they who have a painful torment. So here, anyhow, Imam Fozan is showing us the importance that we're about, it should be about rectification. Even when you refute Ahla Bidah, it should be about rectification because you want good. You want good for the people. You want good for the community to be warned against deviance. And you want good perhaps for that person, especially if they're a person uh, that you see that perhaps they will come around. But it's about warning against their harm and not about just destroying people and characters and spreading evil. And again, there's a difference between warning against Ahl Bidah and warning against a mistake of Ahl Sunnah, of someone from Ahl Sunnah. The second point, it is essential to know that Ahl Sunnah are the first ones to thoroughly exemplify the religion of Islam, whether in the issues of Aqidah or Saluk, meaning moral character. 
it is a restricted understanding to believe that the Sunni or the Salafi is one who only exemplifies the creed of Islam without emphasizing the appropriate Islamic manners, as well as discharging the rights that are due to every Muslim. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, he mentioned towards the end of his book in Al-Aqid al after mentioning the principles of Ahl sunnah in relation to Aqidah, he then said, and they, meaning Ahl sunnah uh, along with these principles, enjoin good and forbid evil based upon the legislative guidelines of the Quran and the Sunnah. They see the obligation of performing Hajj, Jihad, Jumu'ah, and the Eid prayers alongside the Muslim ruler. Whether they are righteous or rebellious, and disobedient, meaning whether the, the leaders are righteous or whether they're oppressive tyrants. Ahl Sunnah still doesn't believe in rebelling against them and does those major obligations which you require a leader and require imam and so on and so forth that are collective duties that they still believe in doing that alongside or behind the ruler. They work diligently to preserve the Muslim community. They deem it part of the religion to give nasiha to the ummah and believe wholeheartedly in the statement of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the believer to another believer is like one solid structure, one part strengthening the other. Then he interlocked his fingers to demonstrate. Ahabatifillah, there are immense benefits if only we were to take heed. But many people seem to misunderstand that Salafiyya is Islam. As Imam Baba Hari mentioned, he said, a sunnah heal Islam wa Islam huwa sunnah. O kama qal uh, Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, so Imam Baba Hari, he mentioned that the that Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. Okay? And so Islam is comprehensive. The da'wah, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah is comprehensive. And that's what Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah is talking about here, letting us know that it's comprehensive. It includes everything in Islam. The ahkam, the adab, the, the, the fiqh, the uh, aqidah, you know, and tawheed is a part of that aqidah and all of the aspects of Islam and manners. And we already mentioned in the prior sitting that the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and there's countless ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for those who want more details go back to our study of Bluga Maram, the Book of Manners and you'll find uh, that we uh, mention many examples and many ahadith and we studied them and we took the benefits from Imam uh, Bin Uthaymeen Rahmatun Wasiya and they were constantly, as is the way of Ahl Sunnah, illustrating and emphasizing what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrated and emphasized. And one of those things is manners. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than good manners. So how is it that we can divorce good manners from the Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah? Or how is it that we can divorce good manners from the menhaj of the Salaf al -Saleh. We can't. And that's why the Salaf wrote many books about it. But here is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioning it. And what's so strange is those people who criticize Shaykh Ibrahim, the author of this treatise, about saying what he said in this treatise. Here it was very clear. And I've studied with him. I never heard him say that if you have bad manners, you're not Salafi. But this is what some of the people, even some of the other scholars who criticize him, they understood. And I don't know where they got it from to this day. We don't know. We don't have a tape. We don't have a, a statement. But we have what they understood and what people have implanted in their, their uh, you know, given the impression that the sheikh was saying. But the sheikh's statement here is very clear. Although we read the English, we can go to the Arabic and, and, and emphasize emphasize that same point if we need to and we can go to his other lectures where he clarified and we can go to his 
his refutation and response to those who criticized him on this. So the point being is that this is a part of Ahl Sunnah. What is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah? So you need to criticize Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah if you're going to criticize Shaykh Ibrahim about the same point. Maybe we need to re-go over what he said. What did Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah just say? He said, and they, Ahl Sunnah, along with these principles, okay, they enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Based upon the legislative guidelines of the Quran and the Sunnah, they see the obligation of performing Hajj, Jihad, Jumu'ah, and the Eid prayers alongside the Muslim ruler, whether they are righteous or rebellious and disobedient. They work diligently to preserve the Muslim community. This Ahl Sunnah is busy. They should be rectifying the Ummah, not people, everyone hating them because they destroyed communities, because they destroyed this Imam, because they made these people run away, because they made they tested these people. That's not the job of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah is Ahl Salah. They're the people of rectification. They are the, 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 the people who should be most befitting uh, to uh, hold those characteristics of the Mu'mineen. They should be the Muslihun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in the Quran, but not be of the people who claim to be the Muslihun, like the Munafiqun. And we're not saying that they are the Munafiqun or the Munafiqin, but this is what we see some of those takfiris and some of those other extremists and the actual hypocrites claiming that they are actually benefiting the people and that they're making islah and that they are the Muslihun, that they're rectifying communities and rectifying the earth when in when in fact they are the mufsidun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that they're the ones who are wreck, wreaking havoc upon the people and wreaking havoc upon communities and wreaking havoc upon the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so then the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam, he mentioned that the role of Ahl sunnah is to give nasiha. And this is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the example of the believers in their love, mercy, and kindness towards one another is like one body. If one part aches, then the rest of the body calls on each other with uh, fervor and vigilance. So here the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made the similitude of the body to the believer or to the ummah. And that they're one. The body is one. You know, you can't, uh, you know, if you feel pain in your arm, it's going to affect uh, other parts of your body. You're going to register that pain in your mind. And it's going to actually probably affect your actions. You're going to try to protect that arm intuitively uh, from, from being harmed even more. You know, this is, this is how your body works. It works as one. And likewise, the ummah is supposed to work as one. That doesn't mean we all run around with Ahl Bid'ah and, and, and people who have, uh, you know, Bid'ah Kufriya or Mukaffara and things like this, and we just run and we hold hands and we sing Kumbaya. No, that's not what, what that means. But rather, it means that we unite on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we اعتسموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا, and we don't divide. That's what it means. And it means we ta'awan ala biri wa taqwa. And we cooperate in righteousness and God fearfulness. Wala ta'awan ala ithmi wa udwan. And do not cooperate in enmity and, and, and uh, discord, you know, and, and being enemies. That's not what we cooperate. We don't cooperate with those traits. We don't cooperate with traits of hizbiyah. We don't cooperate with traits of the people of takfir and the people who call to their imams. Uh, you know, uh, that you should almost worship them or the people of Zandaka or all of these other people from Ahl Bida, but he's talking about how we deal with Ahl Sunnah. That Ahl Sunnah needs to cooperate and, and cooperate with the general Muslims too, but from the Bab of Nasiha in advising your brothers, showing them a good example. How are they going to love the Sunnah? You want them to love the Sunnah, but you don't illustrate the Sunnah towards them. All they see is fitna and discord from you. Wallahu Musta'an. And then the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah also mentioned, they exhort one another to be patient in times of trial and tribulations. This is Ahl Sunnah. And with gratitude in times of ease and with being content with the bitter and unpleasant obstacles that are decreed for them. Meaning the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khayrihi wa sharrihi. They call one another to exemplify good behavior in dealing with others, and they believe in the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most complete of the believers in Iman are those who have the best character. That's a statement of your Prophet, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how is it that you could divorce that from the sunnah? How is that you could divorce that from the sabila mu'mineen? How is that you could divorce that from the salaf asali? How is that you could divorce them, divorce those prophetic manners and good character and good conduct from the way and the minhaj of the salaf? You can't. You can't do it even though many people try. Many people don't exhibit that. They almost destroy it. They almost attack and criticize you for having good manners. Wallahu musta'an. Then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, they consider it praiseworthy to join relations with those that cut them off. Look at that, that's from Ahl Sunnah. And to give to the one who withholds from giving to them and to pardon the one who transgressed against them. SubhanAllah, here's the st statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, what will the people say if you say this now as a student? They'll say you're mumayya. They'll say you've thrown away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. Why? Because because you're forgiving, because you're merciful, because you're exhibiting these traits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to have and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exhibited and wanted us to have. That we have so many ahadith and we have so many ayat. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith of Qudsi, in the rahmati taghlibu ghadibi. Verily, my mercy uh, uh, supersedes my wrath. This is your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that the trait? Isn't that an, a, 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 a evidence to show that that's a trait that is praiseworthy and that we need to have, we need to be forgiving, we need, we need to have excuses for our brother, we need to, you know, you, you, we need to push forward that kindness and that gentleness and that lean warufq that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrated and told us is the best way. And when it's time to be have sh shadeed or shedda, to be stern and firm upon principles or to admonish someone with sternness, then we put everything in its rightful place. That's called hikmah. That's called wisdom. But unfortunately, many people don't have that and they always are stern and harsh with the people. And then there are others, a other group of people who are always so gentle and merciful that they let bid'ah and everything just immerse them. And so it's very important that Ahlul Sunnah is, is going straight and exhibiting the proper and right balance. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah then said, they command one another to be kind to their parents, to keep family ties and to be good to neighbors. They caution against arrogance and speaking about people excessively. Shaykh al-Salaam ibn Taymiyyah said this, how many hundreds of years ago? Whether rightfully or without just cause. So Ahl Sunnah is just, not criticizing people for the smallest things that they disagree with them upon, that have nothing to do with even Masail al-Almiyyah. They might not even have to do with a, 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 a knowledge-based issue, but rather it could just be personal issues. We don't like that you're with the crew. Brother, why do we see you give salams to him? Brother, we need to cut you off if we see you speak to so-and-so again. If you call Sheikh so-and-so again, we're going to cut you off. We're going to call you a mubtadiyah. We're going to phone Sheikh so-and-so to, to refute you. We're going to take you off the minhaj. Where did this come from? Did this come from the principles of Ahl Sunnah? Or did this come from a new form of Hizbiyah that unfortunately crept and corrupted many of our hearts? Wallahu musta'an. May Allah protect us and protect us from uh, kufr shirk wa zandaka and protect us from bid'ah and Hizbiyah and all those things which he subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. They command one another to have the most excellent characters and manners. This is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. And caution against the most hideous of them, meaning the most hideous of manners. Why did Imam ibn Hajr uh, in Bulugh al-Maram, why do we have all that, that chapter of manners? Why did Imam Muslim have those ch the chapter of manners? And why did the great uh, Imma, why did they have whole abwab and, 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 and chapters and books dedicated to the importance of good manners because that's what Islam calls us to because that's the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih and that's the minhaj in Sabil al-Mu'mineen and that's the minhaj of Ahl al-Sunnati wal jamaa and that's the minhaj of the Salafiyun. That's why. Or the minhaj of the Salafiyin. Then, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, they follow the book and the Sunnah, their methodology is Islam, which Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. I don't think it needs any more details, and I don't think you can bring any statement from any of the scholars that is going to deal with the kalam of Sheikh al-Islam. That's why we call him Sheikh al-Islam. He's immense 
profound sense of of knowledge of all the Islamic sciences and his immersion and his way of dealing with Ahl bidah he was just if you look in his books, he he dealt with it. This is why some of the Sufis try to claim Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was a Sufi because the way that he dealt with them, he dealt with them so respectfully and he went into their doubts and their shubahat, even the people of philosophy and otherwise, he dealt with them. He And he was criticized even from other Imams of Ahl Sunnah about this. Other Imams criticized him because Sheikh al-Islam would go into their arguments and detail their arguments as if it seemed that he was exalting their arguments, but instead he was uh, explicating and, and giving details about their arguments to then refute them based upon knowledge, elmi, because he, Allah favored him with that kind of knowledge. Not all, most of us don't have that, that, that benefit and have the blessing of that kind of profound knowledge and, and have knowledge of the book and the sunnah like that. So we don't need to necessarily go into depth into the arguments of Ahl al-Bidah unless you have the Qudra and the ability to do so. You know, unless you're a scholar or a strong student of knowledge or, you know, and, and well versed in that, in that subject matter. But what we are all required to do and is a, is a, is a principle of Ahl sunnah is to be just, is to be just. We're all required to be just, not to lie, not to distort, uh, and, 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 and be blindly prejudiced uh, that we sh th those are traits Ahl Sunnah has with the Mukhalifin that they have with those people who differ with Ahl Sunnah and they surely min baba ola first and foremost they have this with Ahl Sunnah that you're gentle and kind with Ahl Sunnah and you're just with Ahl Sunnah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.